15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Ignition sequence start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Launch commit. Liftoff. We have liftoff with Apollo 14. Three minutes past the hour. The tower is clear. Houston is controlling. Then drop now. 16 seconds. Pitching all program started. 14 maneuvering to a proper flight course. Apollo 14 astronaut Edgar Mitchell, the sixth man to walk on the moon, has all the credentials you'd expect from a straight-laced, right-stuff astronaut. He was a test pilot and a Navy officer. He is a doctorate from MIT. But on the flight back from the moon in 1971, something changed in him. He had a sudden realization that the matter in him came from the same source as the matter in space. He felt a sudden visceral connection to the universe. He began to believe that everyone and everything was directly related. Later, after retiring from NASA, he created the Institute of Noetic Sciences, a group that tries to build bridges between science and spirit. There you go. Armed. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. This is the what a liftoff. And liftoff. Roger, ignition. Boom. Mitchell, who grew up in Roswell, New Mexico, also sets himself apart from other astronauts by openly expressing his view that aliens have visited Earth. These aliens, he says, possess technologies far more advanced than our own, technologies he believes that humans will someday need to survive as a species. Mitchell, who now lives in Palm Beach County, believes his research into these matters will leave an even greater legacy than his legacy of visiting the moon. I suddenly realized that the molecules of my body and the molecules in the body of the spacecraft and the molecule of my partner's bodies were prototyped at least or created in an ancient generation of stars. And that was a wow experience. That was an aha experience. And suddenly instead of being, okay, that's nice intellectual knowledge, it was a visceral experience. It was, I felt it. And it was, uh, uh, my molecules and those star systems are one. It's a unity of everything. And this was accompanied by an ecstasy that uh, was just overwhelming. Since I'd been to the moon, was a local boy, they figured it was somebody they could trust. They didn't want to carry their secret to the grave that Roswell was a real alien incident. So several, several of them told me a story, which I said, okay, thank you. Uh, but a few years later, uh, with uh, another naval, naval officer, Commander Will Miller, Miller from over in the Tampa area, and Dr. Uh, Stephen Greer, we got a, we were at a disclosure conference in Washington, D.C., and we got an appointment to, uh, with the uh, chief of the intelligence committee of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of, at the Pentagon. And we told him our respective stories. And the admiral that was in charge of the committee, we, there was about several officers there, I don't remember how many, half a dozen, besides ourselves, said, I don't know about that, but I will uh, get back to you. And uh, he didn't get back to me personally. He got back to uh, Dr. Greer very shortly and said, uh, what you told us is real. There, was alien visitation. And uh, now that same person has subsequently denied he said that. However, we have independent uh, corroboration that he did go checking, found the location of the so-called special access programs, or one access, special access program, and was told, Admiral, you don't have need to know, therefore you, we can't talk to you. So. That's the same fate that we know that uh, uh, Barry Goldwater suffered when he was running for president and tried to find out about special access, these special access programs. And uh, Walter Webster Hubble, Bill, Bill Clinton's emissary, whom he sent to find out about it, suffered the same fate. You can't know about this. And a few other people, Jimmy Carter, who mentioned before his election that he had had UFO experience. 
and that he was going to find out about it when he got in, if he got elected, but never a word about it thereafter. We're inching ourselves along at this point with the International Space Station, learning to utilize near-Earth space orbit for useful purposes, learning more about living and working in space, which we have to do more of, and then learn how to survive for longer periods in space. And now, we have to also learn some new propulsion systems. And that launches me into uh, a new, the frontier of science that I'm so interested in. Uh, we have major problems in science at this point because of the clash between general relativity and quantum mechanics. One, the science of the very, very small, and Einstein general relativity, the science of the very, very large. And they don't come together well. And we're going to have to solve that problem before we really can go off into the solar system and outside of it. Well, it has to, again, be a national initiative. We've got to recover from where we are at the moment. But I don't think that we're going to do away with Kennedy Space Center. Uh, how fast current future administrations are able and willing to build upon a global space effort, mm -hmm. that remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. Now, I think I've made the case that I think we need to do it. Mm -hmm. But it has to be in the context of the other sustainable priorities that uh, we have for civilization, too. This is Art Levy for Florida Trend.